Well, even though last week was a pretty perfect episode for this show, that does not mean the problems of this season are completely gone. Hey guys, can't remember where Pine Season 2, Episode 6, City Upon a Hill, and I was definitely looking forward to this episode, especially after last week's episode. I mean, so many great reveals in last week's episode. It really seemed like we we're getting the season moving. It really seemed like things were happening, and this was a really good episode. I really enjoyed this episode. There was a lot of really big stuff going on here, but for me, this episode was a lot of thrills, but not a lot of story, and I think there was a good story going on here, but it just felt like this wasn't really, this felt like a season finale, and we're only on episode 6, and my worry is how, what is the season finale really going to give us, because this episode feels like a season finale, just from what's going on and everything, um, but let's just get into this episode, because I was a little bit disappointed by this episode, honestly, because I really was thinking that we were heading in a much different direction than we were, I thought we were going to get a lot more Rebecca-centric stuff, and that she was going to be the real hero, because the way last week's episode teased us, it seemed like Rebecca really was going to be the Theo of this, and that, you know, Theo was more of the Teresa, I thought that's really how it was going to go, is that Rebecca was going to be the main hero, but that's not at all how it seems to be going, I was a little bit disappointed with that, it, not not that her flashbacks, you know, weren't important because they definitely were. It's just the stuff we're dealing with this episode really had nothing to do with that, especially in the first scene, which very much confused me with them. We'll get into that, but let's get to the beginning of this episode, which I gotta say, there was some really fantastic action going on this episode. That's definitely something I'll say, is that this episode was very intense and definitely I thought was very well done. So we start right outside the gates, we see Abby's in the woods, and they are near the water supply drinking, and one holds a baby, and they're very calm and in a group, and then this helicopter approaches, and they all begin to snarl. A female then pulls her young closer, and the helicopter opens fire on them, they may be gunned down, and right away, I mean... This really was a dumb move to obviously go after the Abbeys this way and did what they do. It just it wasn't probably the best move for them, mainly because of the fact that we know these Abbeys seem pretty calm when there isn't any attack. I mean, look at someone like what's going on with um you know lo look at um look at Margaret. You know Margaret, the Abbey they have seems to be re you know very resiliently calm and you know she seems to basically stay that way. She doesn't seem to really do anything unless they attack. So really, this was a really dumb idea for them to just start attacking. I mean, I get, I get that it was Jason's idea, and Jason's not really smart, but, you know, really, I mean, what did you really think was going to happen here? You're going to open fire, you're going to start a war here, and the Hilo reports that the perimeter has been killed, Abby's carry one of their wounded away, and Pil David then gets off the Hilo, they did this to begin construction of the fence, we realize, and this was a good reveal. I did, like, find this out, I definitely thought that was very well done, and uh, I definitely really did enjoy that. That was definitely one of the parts of this episode that I did enjoy is that flashback. I just felt at the beginning, I mean, what did you really think was going to happen? It seems like that's really what started this whole Abby situation is that that's what started the problem. I thought that was definitely very interesting. Um... Basically, we see now Carrie lies in bed with Jason by candlelight. They just had sex, clearly, and he says that they should have a baby. He jumps at that chance that they should have a baby, and she asks if he's ready. And she immediately says no, which I thought was very interesting. If you know, she asks if he's really ready for that, and he says that they've encouraged the first generation to procreate. They should set an example. Probably one of the only smart decisions that Jason has made, to be honest. I mean, Jason really hasn't made many good decisions at all. This honestly was a pretty, you know, I think interesting direction for his character because it does make sense why he come up with this, basically. Carrie rolls over away. He asks what's wrong. She says that she has a lot on her mind, and Jason says hope is good, and basically they're doing well. He says the two of them are a great team, and he knew she was the right choice. He pulls her close, and they spoon. You can tell that definitely there's something more going on. I feel like Carrie's definitely hiding something. Now, what that is, I don't know, but you definitely get that sense here stuff that I was most looking forward to in this episode, obviously with that huge cliffhanger last week with us finding out that, you know, Rebecca was married to Xander, I was very much looking forward to seeing where Theo's storyline would take him, I thought that he was gonna go off on his own, but right away, it seems like any possible direction that he could have gone is ruined here, we see he sits in the bar, he ices his hand, tells the bartender to pick out something for him, he hands him a bottle, he asks if Adam dragged that in, the guy laughs as they brew in the woods two weeks ago as Theo tries it and grimaces, and Theo says the town needs a drunk, and the bartender tells him the job is open, and and I'm like, really? That's what you're gonna do? You're just gonna drink yourself? I mean, it just didn't seem like something Theo would do. I really thought he'd go out and do something, but Rebecca then comes in, sits by him. Right away, there's really no time for these two to have any time apart, and she tells him she looked for him and tried to find him. She says she knows he has questions and she doesn't want to keep secrets. He asks if she tried to have a baby, which I thought was very interesting, and... 
an alarm then starts up, they see people running past down Main Street, that is when the big stuff in this episode really starts, the phone rings on the bar, what do you- and this is where my main complaint comes in the episode. Not like I said that this was a bad episode or anything. It's just this part really felt like a season finale. And it was really weird that all this crazy stuff happened in this episode. Because really, I mean, Theo's asking her some really pressing questions. She doesn't really get to answer them. And I get that that's kind of the point. But it just didn't feel like this was the episode to do that. But after this, things really get crazy. The Abbeys start toss, you know, they t toss flaming torches into the crops. And... At the Harvester camp, we see Adam sharpening a spear where he sees the fires, he yells at everyone that they have to leave, and finally, Adam and Teresa's plot seems to be going somewhere. Like I said, this is the one thing I complained about last week, that this was going nowhere, and it appears it's finally going somewhere, and... Basically, CJ gets everyone moving when, while an Abby attacks. Obviously, they can't stay there forever, so they have to leave. Teresa's in her tent, and Adam runs in, shoots it in the head. More Abbeys attack the camp, and it's a really crazy scene, just knowing these Abbeys are going crazy, and using the loudspeaker, a woman orders all able-bodied men to report to the fire station. And in the lab, Megan's working when the captive Abby starts snarling, throwing themselves at the walls, and only one Abby, Margaret, stands still, staring at Megan. This Abby is different, for whatever reason. Margaret isn't like the other Abby's. Margaret seems to just stand there. It doesn't seem like Margaret um, is going to attack at all. So Margaret's way different than I think any of the other Abby's we've met. And I think that's really interesting because I'm very interested in seeing what's going on with Margaret. I mean, it's a different direction than I thought they were going to take her in. I thought Margaret was going to be someone where they investigate her and then eventually she ends up doing something. But really... I don't see any signs of Margaret possibly, you know, turning against them at any point. It seems like she's very calm. It seems like she's just standing there, and we don't really know why. I think overall that's really interesting. So Thea and Rebecca then stop a townsperson who tells them that the crops are on fire, and everyone who can is going to help, and that's basically why this is going on, because obviously it just kind of came out of nowhere, and now we know what's happening here. So Rebecca tells her husband to go to the hospital, and she'll meet him there later, and, well, he's not her husband now, but he was her husband, and, uh, Carrie then pulls up in, in a Hummer and tells Theo that they need his help, explains they're sending civilians to fight the fires, and soldiers to fight the Abbeys, and this is one of the best parts of the episode, as we know, Theo's been the only doctor in Wayward Pines, and that hasn't been as much of an issue till this episode, because Theo is not all prepared for what he has to face, because Theo warns they'll just die, they'll, they'll just die just the same, and Carrie says they've lost contact with the Harvesters, the doctors get in, they head for the hospital, and... Rebecca then goes to the ice cream parlor where Xander is talking to some of the townspeople, and Xander insists they need guns to defend themselves against the Abbeys, and asks Rebecca if she can get them into the mountain. He warns her she doesn't trust Jason and just wants to avoid a slaughter, because Jason, obviously, I mean, this is a guy that just seems to, you know, resort to violence, and he does not really want to have an all-out war. He just wants this to be kind of a scrimmage, kind of. I mean, that's kind of what this is. He doesn't want it to be a war. He wants to be kind of a scrimmage, and... Basically, that's the best way I can describe it. Jason and his soldiers then drive to the field. They try to put out the fires. The Abbeys attack, and the soldiers return fire. And when Theo arrives at the hospital, Oscar tells them that they've gotten all the emergency supplies ready. Theo tells the residents that he'll try edge as they arrive and tells them that they have to be calm. He assures them that they can do it and walks out. And obviously, this is a very crazy situation, but I like that Theo is trying to stay calm here. I like that he's trying to be very collected, very calm, because that's the way to handle this, really. I mean, it's a really crazy situation. They know what to do. The best way to do this is to stay calm, and I'm glad that Theo does try try to stay calm here, but that really sets up how crazy things get. So the Abbey finally managed to drive them off, and Jason drops to his knees, stares at the burning crops in shock, because he can't believe all this is going on. I mean, literally all their crops are gone, and the soldiers take the wounds to the jeeps, and as we know, that is their only way of getting food supplies from these crops. So really, I mean, this is a really shitty situation that their food's gone, and I, I didn't think this was at all was going to happen, but it's really interesting. I mean, definitely, we see the wounded begin to pour into the hospital, they're screaming in agony. Theo then triages as best as he can. He realizes that some of them were actually bitten, and CJ arrives with a man, says the Abbey's got past them, and goes out to get more. Theo tends to Teresa, whose stats are dropping, and the second she got in there, I'm like, she's gonna die. She's gonna die, and... I honestly don't really care, honestly, I gotta say, the Teresa's been the one character that I honestly feel should just die the second that we were introduced to her, because it just seems like they haven't done anything with her, she's been crying non-stop, and it just seems like they've been trying to end her arc, they haven't, she's been crying non-stop, I knew that she eventually was gonna die, so the second she's there, I'm like, she's probably gonna die, we'll get into that, he assures her that he's not gonna leave her, Jason arrives, demands the first generation patients receive priority, that they're the most important, obviously, because again, they're the first generation, um, and you wonder, you even though most times Jason, yeah, I think he goes way too overboard and he's way too extreme. 
I get where he's coming from here. You know, the first generation, they were raised to do this kind of stuff. They were raised to train, you know, to train for violence and things like that and to fight against the Abbeys. That's exactly why he needs the first generation. So that I'm kind of with him with here. And Theo says that if they are, they are, they're dying. And Oscar's working on a patient and panics. And Theo says that he can't help him because he's got way too many to deal with. And he assures Oscar that he can do it. Oscar manages to find the artery he's looking for, clamps it off after following Theo's advice. And it's a good scene. I like seeing Theo become a teacher and kind of realize what he's doing and really just realize how crazy of a situation this is but also trying to be very controlled in this situation um so Jason then giving blood, Carrie tells him that no one could have anticipated what would happen. He doesn't believe it, and Jason worries what he's good at, if he can trust his instincts, and Carrie says that he prepared them by having them plant the crops. Jason wonders why David didn't account for the exhausted soil and wayward pines, and furious Carrie says she doesn't see a leader before her, but a weak and fearful man. I get what she's saying, that really, he's not acting like a leader. He doesn't display her leadership qualities. He always, you know, is freaking out. He's always very worried, and she tells Jason to act like the leader and to never let them see his doubt. Even if he does, and again, I just feel the way that Carrie's acting, she's just acting very shady. I feel like Katie, Carrie is definitely hiding something. Now, what it is, I don't know, but just the way she's acting this up, so it definitely seems like she's hiding something. We'll have to see what that is. Theo's them walking down the hall when Xander approaches him and says that he was out there with the firefighters. The doctor asks about his jaw. Xander says that he left their wire in their wife in Theo's office, and she, not their wire, their wife in Theo's office says she saved some lives as well, and... As Xander goes, he warns that the first punch is free, but the next one is going to cost him. So, I do like the tension between these two. I think I definitely do like it. It's just they didn't really do too much with it. I mean, you definitely are setting it up. I think they did a good job with this. The fact that Xander is saying this to Theo and the fact what's going on there, I really do enjoy that. I like the tension there. I think that's really interesting. I did like here is that this is when the episode starts to slow down. Now we get to see things we want to see. We see Theo arrives in his office. He asks her, Rebecca still has feelings for Xander. She says that they were cellmates in Wayward Pines, which she chose Theo. And uh, obviously, I like that she answered this question because obviously these two were married, but it didn't seem like they, you know, wanted to be married, really. They were just chosen, and really she does love Theo. And Oscar tells Theo that they need him. He points that Rebecca didn't answer him before going, and Adam and his eyes realize that he's in a hospital bed, and Oscar comes in, and Adam asks that Teresa's dead. The boy refuses to discuss it, saying that Adam has to be family, and Adam lies back down, and there's a lot of, obviously, unresolved feelings between Adam and Teresa, and honestly, I did feel bad for him, because yes, he does want to see Teresa in her dying moments, but she just, she doesn't like him that way, and again, she doesn't like him that way, he needs to realize that. CJ Marlowe then tells Jason, Carrie, and Megan that the Abbeys were targeting any man with a hose, and Megan doesn't believe it, but Mario says that he saw it as his men die, and again, like I said, if they attack, the Abbeys are going to attack, and I think they need to realize that, that the Abbeys aren't going to attack unless they do something, that's why I think that, um, you know, that that's why um, Margaret's not doing anything, because they're not attacking her, you know, they haven't done anything really. So, he tells Jason that they lost half of their men, have less than 20 soldiers left, and CJ says that Abby's placed the first, the fires specifically, and figures that they learn from them. And Megan describes the lab Abby's behavior, and Jason says they had no plants. CJ reports the earth is scorched, and they only have the food in the storehouses, and, J and Jason wonders who long, long they have. CJ says they have less than six weeks left, and... I mean, this is episode 6, so it kind of makes sense they only have 6 weeks left. Basically, I get this, we get the sense that episode 10, something is going to happen between the Abbeys and the humans, definitely. We're building up a war here, and I really do like that. So, Jason then conducts a ceremony for the 35 townspeople that they lost. He says they must rise from what happened in the soldier fires a salute, and basically he's doing what Carrie told him to do. He's trying to be that leader. He's trying to be more of a confident, and also, I think, just a leader that gives hope, not someone that puts people down, not someone that just resorts to violence, someone that does provide hope, and I feel like Jason does want to do that. And I like that they're taking Jason in this more heroic direction, less of a villainous direction. Carrie wants him to provide hope for people. Carrie wants him to be the voice of the people, and not just someone that just resorts to violence, because that's not what he should do, obviously. Resorting to violence isn't doing him any good. He needs to start caring more, and I like that we're going in that direction. I think it's a really good arc for his character, and honestly, I'm really starting to like him. I haven't liked Jason really at all this season, but this episode Episode, I like where they're going with this character, and I like the way that that's going. So Mario and his soldiers visit Xander, say they're collecting the weapons that were commanded from the armory. Xander reminds Mario that they used the weapons to save the soldiers, tosses his rifle to Mario. Mario wonders if they'll discover Xander kept some for himself. Xander says that it's Mario's job to defend the town. He invites Mario to search the place, and... Mario starts to leave. Xander points out the soldiers wear, wear brown shirts, and Mario says that he knows Xander's history. He crashed out of the uh, Marines for dealing drugs, and 
David chose Xander for resourcefulness. Obviously, we know everyone was chosen for a reason. He was chosen for resourcefulness. He's very resourceful. He knows a lot of what's going on. And Mara figures that Xander is profiting from the food stories and says that he knows history repeats itself before walking out. So definitely something's going on there. We don't really know. I kind of want to find out more about Xander's past because just the way they talked about it, it sounds really interesting. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's going on there. So I really like that. Jason then calls Theo in after the condition of the wounded. Theo warns that they're dangerously low on medical supplies because David didn't bring enough or make provisions to create more. And Megan says that David didn't anticipate a war. And yeah, that's true. I mean, David didn't think a war was going to happen. And Theo wonders what he did anticipate. He warns that people could soon be dying of sinus infections because of the lack of medicine because they really don't have much medicine left at all. I mean, there's really a sore lack of medicine. And Mario comes in and reports that Abbeys have been re-entered the valley outside the fence. Steve insists that Abbeys have learned tactics from them and Jason says that they don't understand the concepts and when Theo objects Jason reminds him that, he, that he's there as a medical advisor not a military consultant he needs to learn his place that that's all Jason to do and wonders how they're going to survive and again I really you do get the sense that Theo is trying to do more than required obviously because obviously Jason was the one commanded to lead the first generation it was not Theo even though I think Theo wishes that he was he wasn't the one to do it it was all Jason that was the one that was meant to do that. So we then see Adam, he goes back to uh, Teresa and, and he goes back to uh, Teresa and finds her in a bed breathing on a machine and we see a flashback where Megan approaches Adam on the bench, says that David sent her, she says that David took care of things and Ethan belongs to the future and this is basically when Adam got to, um, you know, got to where Pines, Teresa is Adam's and Megan has heard that Adam wanted to call it off, that's why he says that just because he loves her doesn't make it right and I kind of feel bad for the guy definitely because he definitely wanted to be with her, he definitely you know thought he had a chance with her and he clearly didn't and we then see uh, back in the present Rebecca goes to the beauty shop sees Xander leaving the ice cream parlor with a box she follows him to an alleyway she sees him giving the box to a man she confronts Xander in the parlor so that she knows what he's doing Xander says that he gave the man apples because he figured that family could use them more than he did and he insists that he's keeping his head down and tells Rebecca that they weren't nothing and that there definitely was something between them even though she says that all oh, was just you know because we were chosen there definitely was something there she has to acknowledge that and it's kind of what's going on with Adam and Teresa. It's kind of going on with Xander and Rebecca. The difference is I care a lot more about Xander and Rebecca than I do with Adam and Teresa because they just aren't that interesting. Xander and Rebecca is a lot more interesting situation. Uh, you know, Adam wasn't chosen for Teresa. Megan just says that he should be with her and that Ethan is the one that they, you know, that Teresa is supposed to be with. So he insists that he's keeping his head down, tells Rebecca that they weren't nothing, and he reminds that there were good times as well as problems between them, and people do change. And Xander says that they don't want them to be human and wear pines, but it happens, and suggests that she asks Theo if he knows what he means, and he then asks when he's coming home, but Rebecca doesn't answer him and leaves, so very interesting, it does seem like she's trying to make a choice here, I feel like she's kind of conflicted between Theo and Xander, I think she likes both, but she doesn't really know who she really wants to be with, so that's something I do like, but I just, I don't know, I really want Rebecca just to have a little bit more to do, especially after all that was revealed last week, she didn't do that much in this episode really, I mean she did talk to Theo, answer some questions, but she didn't really do much in terms of the town, I wanted to see her kind of do more and she didn't really do anything so at the hospital adam remembers the past we see adam watch Teresa, ethan in the park celebrating ben's birthday with their son of course we did see that scene of course um when of course the you know the scene where they were celebrating uh you know ben's birthday adam was there watching which is kind of weird but that's basically what happened Adam then goes back to Teresa, says that he's sorry he wasn't supposed to she wasn't supposed to follow ethan he takes her hand and that she was supposed to go with him and again i just I just feel like this was something that they wrote in to give Adam stuff. He apologized for not protecting her. Teresa opens her eyes, pulls her hand away, and after Adam leaves, Teresa remembers celebrating Ben's birthday, and she dies. And I don't care. I honestly did not care that she died. Why? Because... Adam's the only one left now. Out of all the characters in Wayward Pines, Adam's the only one left. Now, yes, I guess that Adam didn't have much screen time in the first season. He was only in, like, three episodes. I understand that. They want to give him more to do this season. I'm all for that. It's just... They haven't gone anywhere different with this. It's all been... Adam was supposed to be with Teresa, he wanted to be with Teresa, there's a lot of unrequired um, love, and Teresa grieving over her son. It hasn't moved past that, and... You know, I really think that Teresa, when she was introduced, she just should have died, because I really don't think she's contributing much to this season. I'm glad this is over. It's really been just weighing down a lot of what's been going on. I'm glad that this is over. I'm glad that she's dead. 
I don't really care that she died, but I don't, I don't know why she died in this episode, honestly. I don't know why Teresa had to die. They could have taken her in more of a direction, and they decided to just stop. To me, this just feels like they quit. They're like, you know what, guys, this isn't working, we're just gonna quit, and... Yeah, it wasn't really working, but I feel like they should have stuck with it. I've told you guys before, I'd rather someone stick with the storyline than just end it before it starts. And that's exactly what they did with Teresa. They ended this before it started. It didn't really work, and kind of pissed me off they did that. I don't know why Teresa had to die. Really, she didn't have to die. They could have stuck with her a little bit more. They could have done some more stuff there, but they didn't. And I don't really understand why they decided to do that. But back in the lab, Megan runs an MRI scan of Margaret. Theo comes in as what she has accomplished, and Megan insists that they need to learn why Margaret is docile so they can control the other Abbeys, and Theo says that they're looking for temporal gyrus, which I don't know what that is, but that's indicating advanced thought and problem solving. That's what that is, basically, and he realizes that Margaret's gyrus is double the size of a human. She thinks much different, you know, she is a much more advanced thought than other humans do, so that's very interesting, and I think that might be one of the reasons why she is so different. I mean, I've talked about this before, Abby seem to be much different than humans, and I think we're really starting to get more into the psyche of Abby's, which that's something I'm definitely interested in, especially now we're done with this Teresa Adam bullshit, now we can really move forward with focusing on the Abby's, and I really do like that. So later, Arlene approaches Theo in his office, says that she has a spare bedroom, because obviously he's not going to be Rebecca anymore, he just can't be with her, you know, things are not good between them, and she insists she would give him his privacy, but he walks out without a word, checks on Adam, asks him if the Abbeys communicate with each other, when Theo mentions that they've captured a female Abby, Adam asks if she has a mark on her palm, and I think Adam seems to know more about the Abbeys, I mean, yeah, he was hiding out for a while, he discovered a lot, so definitely I think there's more going on there, we'll have to see though. CJ's then at his greenhouse reading, he hears Abby's howling in the distance, and the townspeople fear, hear the Abby's roaring and go outside. Outside the fence, the Abby's stand and howl in Jason's office. The monitors show hundreds of Abby's moving towards Wayward Pines, and it's really just a crazy, incre it's an incredible scene, but also it's kind of crazy because you know that eventually these Abby's are going to attack, and in the lab, the male Abby's howl while Margaret stands, and Margaret's just standing there and staring, and Arlene asks Theo if they're safe. He doesn't know. We see that the, all these people staring. He doesn't actually know if they're safe. He doesn't give her an answer because, honestly, he's very uncertain as to if they are safe or not, but that is how the episode ends. Really good stuff overall. Let's get into this episode. So like I said, there was some really great stuff in this episode that I definitely really did enjoy. The history, the Abbeys, um, you know, the whole stuff with Rebecca, Xander, and Theo. I really liked that. I thought that was very well done. Um, I thought the action was very well done in this episode. I like seeing Jason. They're trying to give him more to do. Carrie's definitely high, but they're definitely trying to give more for these characters and not just Theo, Rebecca, and Xander, because those have been the two characters they focus on the most, and the other ones just have been kind of not wooden. They just haven't done much with them, and now they're definitely starting to, which I really do like. Um, but I'm glad that we're done with the Adam Teresa storyline. It just seems like it ended too quickly. I don't know why Teresa had to die. I think they really just could have move forward, give her something more to do, um, maybe have her try something out with Adam, I don't really know, I just don't know why she had to die, I mean, why'd you have her wake up and die, it just felt very cliche, I don't know why they'd do that, I thought that was really dumb, but I like, like I said, I like that we're starting to get more into the heads of the Abbeys, because there's definitely more going on with the Abbeys than we think, I think they think and feel differently than humans, and I think we're really gonna start to see that, um, as the season goes on, which I'm really looking forward to seeing, What's different about Abby's? What is it, you know, what in, what in their mind is different? How does their, you know, uh, psychosis work? That's something I'm definitely looking forward to is how that all turns out. Um, are they really safe, though? How are they going to get away from these Abbeys? Why is Margaret so different from the rest of the Abbeys? Why does she just stand there and not attack them? Because, again, we see all these Abbeys, but Margaret just seems to stand there. So we don't really know what's going on there. She's smarter than the Abbeys, how those Abbeys are. We don't really know. I mean... Again, I'm, the whole thing with me saying they attack first, that's me guessing. I'm not 100% certain. I honestly don't know what's going on, and I like that. I like that mystery. I like that intrigue. And now, they're short on food, and CJ definitely, I think, is going to be very worried about that. We know he's very worried about food shortage, shortage, so now they do have food shortage, and we don't know what they're going to do with that, so that's going to be interesting. As far as Xander and Rebecca, do they actually have something? Like I said, I think Rebecca's very torn right now between Theo and Xander. I like this love triangle, I also don't like this love triangle because it keeps Rebecca, I think, from doing something more interesting. Again, we know that she built the town. I just thought they'd give her something a little bit more interesting to do, and they didn't, which I'm kind of surprised about. I just kind of wanted them to give her a little more something to do. They didn't. As far as Jason goes, I like that he's going in this more heroic direction. I like that Carrie's trying to help him out. But Carrie's definitely hiding something. The fact she doesn't want to have a baby, the fact she just shut that down immediately, I mean, there's definitely a reason why, and I'm looking forward to seeing really what that reason was. Um, 
I kind of want some flashbacks with Xander. We find a little bit more about him, like I said, in that scene with Mario, where we find out that he was in, you know, the military with drugs and everything. I want to find out more what's going on there, how he seems to know a lot more, because Adam as well seems to know a lot more about the Abbeys, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to go, and especially Adam and Theo. I think we get the sense these two are going to be working together, and I'm looking forward to seeing um, how that's all going to go down, you know, what they're going to find out about these Abbeys. Definitely, Adam seems to know a lot. Theo knows a lot. What is it about the Mark? that Adam knows as well. I think that's going to be really interesting, what's going on there. Adam's now the only one left. Adam's the only original character from Where Pines still alive on the show, which is interesting, but again, I think it kind of makes sense, because like I said, he didn't have much to do, so I get why they're not, you know, while they're giving him, um, you know, a lot more to do this season, because he didn't have much to do in the first season. But over, guys, I you guys saw this episode, love to your thoughts on it. I definitely really did enjoy this episode. Not as good, definitely not as good as last week's, but I think definitely a really good episode. I still really did enjoy it. Definitely really good stuff. Like I said, a bit messy, definitely, especially with the Teresa and Adam stuff, but I'm glad that's over. I you guys saw this episode left your thoughts and it will see you guys in my next video which will be for i think bloodline and i will see you guys for that okay bye